Uh, just a short announcement. Um, we are now asked to announce that the service is being live streamed. Uh, oh, you know. Okay. Um, my call to worship. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Amen. Our first hymn, uh, all the hymns are in uh, Singing the Faith. Our first hymn is number 99, All Creatures of Our God and King. Let's pray. Lord God, King of the universe, in the beginning you made all things out of nothing. You were there as the universe grew, as light exploded and forces broke free, as atoms emerged and stars flamed with brilliance. Your love made the earth, the mountains, the rolling plains, the churning rivers, the deep oceans, with green, gold and blue, you brought colour to the world, shimmering in sunlight. You created animals from the tiniest flea to the enormous elephant, the scampering rabbit and the spouting whale. How wonderful are your works. You created humankind and made us in your image, vulnerable, and fragile, yet capable of great things. Glorious God, the whole of creation proclaims your marvellous work, increasing us a capacity to wonder and delight in it, that heaven's praises may echo in our hearts and in our lives, and those lives be spent as good stewards of the earth. 
and now a prayer of confession. Creator God, forgive us for the mess we've made of your planet, for our lording it above all living things. Help us to make amends as we reflect on our mistakes. We acknowledge our failure to live responsibly as part of your creation. We have taken what we want without considering the consequences. We have wasted and discarded without thought for the future. Open our hearts and minds, Lord, for the signs of our times and the destruction of your creation, that we may turn from our greed and our lack of vision and see a world made anew in Jesus Christ, who forgave sin and offers the assurance of that blessed forgiveness now. Amen. We have our first reading now from Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31, and chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And God went on to say, Let us make man in our image, according to our likenesses, and let them have in subjection the fish of the sea, and the living creatures, and the heavens, and the domestic animals of all the earth, and every moving animal that is moving upon the earth. And God proceeded to create the man in his image. In God's image, he created him, male and female. Further, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and be many. Fill the earth, and subdue it. And have in subjection the fish of the sea, the flying creatures of the heavens, and every living creature that is moving upon the earth. And God went on to say, here, I have given to you all vegetation, bearing seed which is on the earth, of the whole earth, and every tree on which there is fruit of a tree bearing seed. To you, let it serve as food. And to every wild beast of the earth, and to every flying creature of the heavens, and to everything moving upon the earth, in which there is life as a soul, I have given all green vegetation for food, and it came to be so. After that, God saw everything that he had made, and look, it was very good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, a sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the army came to their completion. And by the seventh day, God came to the completion of his work, that he had made, and he proceeded to rest on the seventh day from all his work that he made. And God proceeded to bless the seventh day and make it sacred, because on it he would be rested for all his work that God had created for the purpose of making. This is the history of the heavens and the earth in the time of their being created, in the day that Jehovah God made the heaven and the earth. Thanks be to God for his word. We're going to sing again now. It's number 82. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
And now, a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for the wonder of life and the beauty of this world. So much around us that moves us to delight and wonder. Thank you for the presence in the here and now and the way you faithfully bless us and give meaning to our lives. But above all, thank you for what you hold in store, the joy that awaits us in your kingdom, greater than anything that our hearts could conceive, special beyond our words and understanding. We are truly blessed. Amen. The Lord's Prayer this morning will be different because instead of saying it, I'd like you to listen. It's a, a more modern version and it comes from New Zealand, believe it or not. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Source of all that is and shall be. Father, Mother of us all, loving God, in whom is heaven? The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done. Your commonwealth of peace and sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from others, forgive us. In the times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. And from trials too, date, too great to endure, spare us. From the grip that is evil, spare us for we know lord the power and the glory are yours for ever and ever amen uh, we're now going to take the offertory for the good work in this church Father God, we bring you these offerings. We bring them with our love and we bring them in humility. For Father, they are small compared to what you give us. We thank you for all your gifts and we ask that these gifts be used wisely. In your blessed name, Amen. going to have our second reading now and it's from Psalm 19 which fits in with our theme today God's glory in creation how clearly the sky reveals God's glory how plainly it shows what he has done each day announces it to the following day each night repeats it to the next no speech or words are used, no sound is heard, yet their message goes out to all the world and is heard to the ends of the earth. God made a home in the sky for the sun. It comes out in the morning like a happy bridegroom, like an athlete eager to run a race. It starts at one end of the day and it goes across to the other. 
nothing can hide from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives new strength. And the commands of the Lord are trustworthy, giving wisdom to those who lack it. Amen. We're going to sing again. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm going to speak. Well, we've heard that reading from Genesis where God created the world. And I was reflecting how in six days God created the earth, beginning with the day and the night and continuing with water on dry land. Then populating the earth with vegetation and then creating the moon, the sun, and the stars, filling the water, the skies, and the land with living things. How great is our God. Finally, he created man and woman, tasking them to take care of all of this. And the first six verses of Psalm 19 speak of the glory in creation. It shows us what an incredible and beautiful complicated that this place is. But we are asked to care for the earth, us, to make sure that the natural balance is maintained. We need to nurture this fragile balance. Now, I, I'm sure that many of you will be aware through reading in the newspapers that there's a really special conference coming up in Glasgow. It's called the COP26, which means Conference of the Parties, basically. And it's an important moment in our times. World leaders will meet to make progress towards the goals of the Paris Agreement made in other years. And the UN Framework on Convention on Climate Change. And as I say, it's been held in, in Glasgow and it will be a pivotal moment in the fight against climate change. And today, with many of our churches in the UK, we've been asked to focus on climate change. We had a, in the local preachers meeting, we had a very strong message that it should be spoken about today. God must weep when he looks down on our world. And as we look at our world today, we can see the many ways that we've damaged this beautiful gift that God has given us. You know, if somebody gives you a gift, you wouldn't throw it away or destroy it. You would be thankful. And that's how we need to be. The way that we live and work and consume have pushed creation to breaking point. Whether it's plastic pollution, littering our oceans, or even our land. I took a short, work, a short walk yesterday, only from my house up to Trinity, and I counted 11 plastic bottles. Masks, oh, numerous um, plastic containers, um, polystyrene containers from the chip shop, just lots of rubbish that could have been recycled, that could have been disposed of sensibly. But people just walk along and they just throw it. We are a throwaway society, and it distresses me, it makes me upset. And then there again with climate change, we have extinction of animals because they don't have anywhere to live. And we do have a severe climate crisis 
Just make no mistake about that. We read in our newspapers and we watch TV and we're made painfully aware of these facts. The climate crisis is causing floods and storms and we've misused and damaged this beautiful, most precious gift of God. And we're now feeling the effects in the UK. But the impacts are really hitting hard for people in poverty. I think it hits them the hardest, and it's hard to grasp what that really means. When I was planning this service during the week, uh, as often happens, I have a spiritual block. I'm sitting there in front of my laptop, with a lovely candle lit, with my beautiful uh, praying hands that do inspire me to pray. And I was thinking, Lord God, I know this is an emotive subject, but I re really need you to give me the words to say. Because I'm not only talking about earth pollution, I'm talking about poverty. And then God never, ever lets me down. He's never let me down. He's been a bit slow sometime in answering, but he answered. And I thought back to three weeks before when I was invited to preach at Trinity. Not to their congregation in the morning, but in the afternoon. They were a lovely congregation and they were from various parts of Africa. They're a new group that are using the building at Trinity. And my beloved, as he does, just happened to mention that his wife was a local preacher. Well, you know what happened next, don't you? David had organize the move of this family, this beautiful church family, to Trinity. He sorted out a lot for them, and it was done very quickly. And one of the gentlemen there have named him Master of Protocol. That sounds very important, doesn't it? But he's not, because he's very humble. <laughs> but I did have to laugh. But the number was growing of this family and they'd had to move from another church that couldn't accommodate them anymore. So now they're thrilled to bits that they can use Trinity. And we were made so welcome. And uh, we met their pastor, Ernest, and his lovely wife, who uh, was, was the, taking care of the children as well. And her name is Ange. Pastor Ernest, translated when I preached. I wasn't sure how that would work, but you know it did. It really did. I probably spoke a little bit slower than I would normally, but it worked. I preached on my calling, and I preached on the calling of many people in the Bible, mostly in the Old Testament. But the congregation really enjoyed it. Their service is quite long. Not an hour or 45 minutes. I was actually there from one o'clock till three o'clock. <laughs> but it was wonderful. We had a fab time. And the choir was amazing. Just bursting into song. It was so glorious. In beautiful harmony. It was wonderful. I just, I was moved to tears, I've got to say, I did cry, because I was so overcome with this obvious love of God, this spiritual awareness of these people. It was great. The prayers and the readings were all translated, just for David and I, really, because many of the people didn't speak English. They had various languages, because they were from various parts of Africa and the presence of the Holy Spirit was really there. We were introduced to many of the congregation afterwards 
But one of the things that really touched our hearts were the stories of war and poverty. The younger members of the congregation translated what some of the people were saying to us. And many of those people are refugees from various parts of Africa. And they're separated from families. They've left mothers and fathers and grandchildren, uh, grandparents in those places. And they were from some places that I'd only ever seen on a map. Places that were mentioned were Ethiopia, Rwanda, Nigeria, Namibia, Burundi, the Congo, the South Sudan. And many of the congregation had seen terrible fighting and had lost loved ones. One gentleman wasn't shy. He lifted up his shirt and he showed me some of the terrible wounds that he'd experienced. The scars were really bad, really, really bad. And I was quite overcome. And he, he said to me, he said, but God saved me. My God saved me. I was dying and my God lifted me. And I felt quite moved. He'd been a teenage soldier and had been actually forced to join the army, probably when he was too young. But his faith saved him. And one gentleman spoke to me about a relative in Ethiopia. She's a young woman in her 30s and she has a young family. A few years ago, she could rely on the rains, which happened not too regularly, but they did come. But now, with the change of climate, the rain doesn't come as often. So she has to travel for hours each day to obtain water for her family to drink. Her livelihood depends on selling livestock, but the drought has killed nine of her ten cows. Now, these ten cows would be like a hundred sheep to us because it was just all she had. And she's only got one left now. And she's lost half of the goats, which are used for milk and for meat and for their coats. So the goat is used quite well. And at one time, the small piece of land that she farms was fertile and green, and the crops grew really well. But then, no rain for six months. Six months is a long time. No rain, and she's lost so much. You can imagine the situation that she's in. And the reality is that this lady, and many like her, are paying the price for the emissions which have mostly been generated by developed nations like ours. And around the world, millions of people are being pushed back into poverty. And it's happening, been happening for a long time. I don't think we've been taking any notice. I really don't. In 2016, world hunger started to increase for the first time in a decade, and it's continued to increase every year since because of climate change and conflict with climate change increasing the risk of conflict. Let's face it, if in Africa or, or in any country really, if somebody doesn't have anything and somebody does, somebody might want what somebody else has got and we have so much. Science is clear. The climate crisis is being caused by us, especially us in developed nations, and the impacts are accelerating. And we're running out of time, we really are. And we've got to act, we've got to act fast. And we do have a unique, unique window of opportunity really now. What can we do? Well, the government, is going to choose, hopefully, to rebuild after, after the COVID-19. But you know, we can't make an excuse that everything's COVID because it's not. These things have been happening before COVID. COVID has made things difficult for everybody. 
but we're hoping now that our economy, our climate, and society in general will be made better. There are small things that we can do. Recycling, which I'm sure you ladies and gentlemen do anyway. When shopping, look at the packaging, because such a lot of it now is plastic. Looking at pollution in general, but probably the most important thing that we can do as a church is pray. We ask God for help in this situation because God calls us to love our neighbours. And it's not just our neighbours round about, it's our neighbours in the world. He calls us to love our neighbours both at home and abroad. Jesus teaches us to speak up against injustice of any kind, even when it's costly to ourselves. And so, today, I'd like you to think about committing to all that I've said in prayer and action so that we can address the huge injustice of climate change and its impact on the poorest people of this world. Amen. We're going to sing again. Five, two, three. And because it's before our prayers of intercession, it, it, the, the song is, It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. And it's number 523 in your hymn books. And now we're going to pray for other people. Father God, we bring you our concerns for your people and the world, maker and lover of all, in the mystery of your kindness. You've bound us to each other and called us to serve you. And we're reminded of the beauty of our world, especially when it's damaged by human carelessness 
and threatened by human greed. And we ask that we may learn to care for the earth as you do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches to which we belong, that they be centres of faith, hospitality and imagination, modelling the future rather than lamenting the past. We ask that you impart wisdom and integrity to our world leaders as they make decisions that affect all humanity. And grateful for the life in our bodies, we pray for those whose lives are diminished by ill health, depression, grief or rejection, asking for healing, affirming and the listening which will encourage and restore them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessing and peace on those people that we know and some that we don't. Please pray for Phyllis, for Edna and family and all the ladies at her nursing home, for Rini and Derek, for Christina and Ray, and Christine from Springfield Gardens, whose husband passed away suddenly, and for Connor, and for John and his family. We pray for our church mem member, Steve, who is watching us from Spain. We pray for a safe journey home. For Sheila and Dorothy. We do pray for those who mourn, Lord. Grant them peace. And conscious of the peace of this place, we pray for those who have no peace at all because of war or the threat of war and violence, for those in the grip of hunger, with lack of hope. May the voice of the victims be heard, Lord, and the work of peacemakers be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn now number 124 in your hymn books and it's for the fruits of all creation.
the Holy Spirit who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos, form you in the likeness of Christ and renew the face of the earth. Amen. And I think we'll share the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.